If you're a huge fan of the bullfrog or if you're looking at this new bullfrog blueprint from the store which is done in collaboration with Red Bull apparently because it has wings then you definitely want to stick around to watch the rest of this video. In this video we're going to break down the stats for the bullfrog going over each individual attachment to let you know what is the best class setup for the bullfrog with the stats. If you enjoy weapon comparisons and overall tips and tricks for Warzone and also breakdown videos like this, subscribe to the channel as we try to reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers and also click that link in the description down below and follow us over on Twitch, we try to reach our goal of 100 followers over there as well. So getting straight into things, on the screen just now you will see the bullfrog and as usual we'll start off with the muzzle attachments. Now we all know that right now the probably most popular attachment will be the GRU suppressor because you get sound suppression, vertical recoil control, bullet velocity increases and also effective damage range increases. Now the main things we tested for here was the recoil control as well as the bullet velocity. So on screen now you'll see the bullet velocity values for the GRU suppressor and you can see that it helps with your bullet velocity by about 34% which is a huge bonus especially for a silencer attachment uh, like the GRU suppressor. So this boosts your bullet velocity from 547 meters per second all the way up to 735 meters per second. Then if you're looking at all of these attachments, now going through every single one of these attachments, most of them other than the sound suppressor state that they give you some sort of recoil control. On the screen now you will see the recoil chart for every single one of these attachments. On the very left of the base weapon, then we have the muzzle brake, then the flash guard, then the sound suppressor, the Spetsnaz compensator, the KGB eliminator and the GRU suppressor. Now like I said, what these attachments are stating mainly is a help with your vertical recoil. So they're not helping with horizontal recoil, just vertical recoil. And as you can see, the best two attachments for helping with vertical recoil here seems to be the Spetsnaz compensator and the best is the KGB eliminator for sure. So these two attachments would be the best two options if you're focusing on mainly controlling the recoil for this gun. But as you've probably already noticed, there's not a ton of hard recoil patterns to manage here. It goes upwards and to the left very slightly and this is not difficult to manage whatsoever. So in my opinion, you don't really need the vertical recoil controlling attachments on this gun. The GRU suppressor work perfectly fine, especially because you're getting that huge bonus to bullet velocity. You're also going to get a bonus to your effective damage range. Running through all the other pros and cons, because I don't want to spend too much time on this, most people will just choose the GRU suppressor because it is the best attachment. Uh, but it does give you a con to aim down sight speed and we tested this to be roughly about 10%. It's not a huge con, but it definitely does hurt your aim down sight time. Then the KGB Eliminator was one of the best at controlling that vertical recoil, but this gives you an aim down sight firing movement speed con, a shooting movement speed con, and a horizontal recoil control con. Now the horizontal recoil control wasn't all that noticeable when we looked at the recoil chart, so I wouldn't really consider that a huge con. But the main other two cons there are for your movement speeds. So if you don't want to be moving a lot slower with your SMG, then try and stay away from the KGB Eliminator. And then the other one that helped quite a bit with the vertical recoil was the Spetsnaz Compensator. And again, it does increase your horizontal recoil a little bit from what we've seen earlier on, but not by a huge amount. So personally, if you're trying to control the recoil as much as possible, I would go for the Spetsnaz Compensator over the KGB Eliminator. But in terms of the overall best attachment, it's definitely the GRU Suppressor. So the next set of attachments we tested was the underbarrel attachments. And we tested the recoil controlling ones as well as the hip fire controlling ones as well. But the foregrip, the Spetsnaz grip and the Spetsnaz speed grip all help with either horizontal recoil control, horizontal and vertical recoil control. So on screen now what you'll see is a recoil chart for the foregrip, the Spetsnaz grip and the Spetsnaz speed grip. And then we also have the base recoil chart there for reference as well. And the best attachment here is definitely the Spetsnaz grip overall. It seems to be helping the vertical recoil, which it definitely does. And it also helps maybe the horizontal a little bit. There's not a ton of horizontal recoil with this gun whatsoever. And honestly, any recoil controlling attachment for this gun is kind of wasted in my opinion because there's not a ton of recoil with it anyway. So I would stay away from any recoil controlling attachments with the Bullfrog. Now what I'm going to do is bring up the under barrel hip fire attachment. So this is the red cell foregrip as well as the bruiser grip. So these are the only two under barrels that help with hip fire. 
And then on the very left, we have the base weapon for reference. And what we can actually see here is that the red cell foregrip, in my opinion, is actually performing the best. Now, this was done at a four meter distance, as you can see on screen. And like I said, in my opinion, I do think the red cell does the best because the recoil chart is kind of more vertical instead of horizontal. It's going to make it much easier to hit a human target because human targets are longer vertically than horizontally. So like I said, I think the red cell foregrip is the best option here in terms of hit fire. Now quickly going into the other pros and cons of all of these under battle attachments. If we're looking at the foregrip, it did help with horizontal recoil control, maybe by a tiny amount, not a huge amount. The red cell foregrip, in my opinion, is the best attachment for under battle attachments on the bullfrog. It gives you the best hit fire accuracy. It also gives you sprinting movement speed, which is definitely very useful with the SMG so you can move even quicker than you usually do. The patrol grip only gives you that sprinting movement speed and I don't really see anyone using uh, this attachment. The bruiser grip does help with hip fire accuracy as we've just seen, but it does give you a movement speed bonus, but no cons. So if you don't want any cons, then this is a decent attachment. But like I said, I do think the red cell four grip would be the better option for hip fire. The Spetsnaz grip does help the best with recoil overall, in my opinion but then the cons that you get are not worth it and on top of that it doesn't help all that much with the recoil for enough for it to be a viable attachment and then the spetsna speed grip again is very similar to the foregrip in terms of recoil pattern and it does give you a con to movement speed so in my opinion i would choose the the red cell foregrip the next set of attachments we tested was then the barrel attachment so we quickly move on to the barrel attachments now and we can see we have all of these barrels listed on screen just now. Most of them do state they give you help with bullet velocity, which was the main thing we tested. So that's the only thing we tested with these barrels. Because after you do that, you can kind of guess which ones are going to be the best. In terms of bullet velocity, you'll have that on screen just now. And you can see that the base bullet velocity for the bullfrog is 547 meters per second, which is a decent amount for an SMG in my opinion. The extended barrel then boosts that to 797 meters per second. The cavalry lancer does nothing uh, to your bullet velocity. The reinforced heavy barrel, or the VDV reinforced barrel, whatever you want to call it, gives you a bullet velocity of 930 meters per second, which is a huge, huge bonus. This is almost doubling um, your bullet velocity. Then the liberator barrel definitely does the best in terms of bullet velocity by 1033 meters per second. That's a ton more bullet velocity, uh, especially for an SMG. This is going to be way too much in my opinion. Then the bullet velocity for the rifled barrel doesn't actually do anything once again, so it doesn't actually do anything to your bullet velocity as it states in game. And then the last barrel, which is the task force barrel, does help with bullet velocity and boosts it out to 845 meters per second. Down at the very bottom of the screen, you'll see the liberator barrel plus the GRU suppressor gives you a bullet velocity value of 1384 meters per second, which is just insane. You don't really need that fast a bullet velocity with an SMG. Not only that, this is better than some of the assault rifles in the game and some of the sniper rifles in the game, so this is absolutely insane. But in terms of going over the other pros and cons, which is really important in my opinion, the extended battle doesn't give you any cons, so if you do just want a slight boost to bullet velocity, definitely a decent battle. Cavalry Lancer battle I would stay away from for sure. The reinforced heavy battle helps with bullet velocity as well as damage range, so this is going to be one of the more popular battles in my opinion for the bullfrog. The Liberator Barrel does help so much with bullet velocity, but like I said, you don't really need that huge bonus to bullet velocity alone, especially just for an SMG. The damage drop-off is going to be so early that it doesn't really matter how good the bullet velocity is. The Rifle Barrel does help with effective damage range, doesn't really change your bullet velocity at all, so I wouldn't really use this battle either. And the Task Force Barrel is going to be a great option as well, even though it does give you a con to vertical as well as horizontal recoil. As we've just shown in the previous attachments and the base weapon recoil chart, there isn't a ton of recoil you get with this gun. So even adding a little extra recoil to get faster bullet velocity, a good strafe speed, which is going to be one of the more important things about this attachment, and an effective damage range bonus is definitely something I'd be willing to trade off, especially with the bullfrog and how accurate the gun is already. So in my opinion, the two best battles here would be the reinforced battle or the task force battle. The next attachments we then tested was the ammunition attachment. So what we did is we tested these all for reload times as well as aim down sight times because that is the main con that all of these attachments do give you. So on screen just now, you'll see uh, all the reload times and the aim down sight times for every single one of these uh, ammunition attachments. You can see that the base reload time is two seconds. 
and the base aim down sight time is 183 milliseconds and the 65 round mags do not change any of your stats but do give you a 65 round mag so if you do want a slightly bigger magazine you could definitely go for the 65 round it doesn't give you any cons as it does stay in game the fast mags do give you a slightly quicker reload by about 50 milliseconds and does not hurt your aim down sight time once again the 65 round speed mags, although they do give you a slightly bigger mag, they don't actually reload any quicker and they do hurt your aim down sight time uh, even more, so I wouldn't use this attachment at all. I would probably go for the 85 round Stanag mags though, because they do give you the same base reload time and they do hurt your aim down sight time at 233 milliseconds, but they do give you the biggest magazine possible and having that huge magazine on the bullfrog is probably one of the reasons why it makes it such a cool weapon to use. The Vandal Speed Loader reloads the quickest at 1.48 seconds and doesn't hurt your aim down sight time nearly as much. And the 85 round VDV Fast Mags doesn't change your reload time, hurts your aim down sight time the most. And it also does give you that 85 round mag. But in my opinion, because it doesn't really reload any quicker, I would go for the Stanag 85 round mags. But if you do want something that reloads quick and doesn't hurt your aim down sight time, the Fast Mags is probably the other best option. Now the last thing we did test on the Bullfrog was the laser attachments. Now the Bullfrog is such a hit fire machine, even for the base weapon, it's so accurate in terms of hit fire accuracy. And that is why I wanted to go over all of the hit fire attachments for this gun. So what we have on screen now, you'll see the chart for all the hit fire attachments. So this is the laser attachments now. So you'll see the base weapon on the very left, the steady aim laser. Then you'll see the KGB target designator then the 5 milliwatt laser and lastly the ember sighting point and it's quite clear to see that the best attachment here is the ember sighting point it definitely does the best in terms of hit fire accuracy on the bullfrog the one thing i would say about the ember sighting point though is that it does have that weird light effect and i really don't like it inside warzone i think it just kind of puts you off in my opinion because you have that light shining on random objects when you're running around the map whereas the 5 milliwatt laser doesn't actually show the laser at all and it also doesn't really intrude on your screen as much as the ember sighting point so even though the 5 milliwatt laser isn't the most accurate hit fire attachment here i would personally opt to go for the 5 milliwatt laser but if you were going for the absolute best hit fire attachment the ember sighting point is definitely the best here from the looks of things and as I said uh, earlier on, the laser attachments are not currently visible for the Cold War weapons. So even if you're using that 5 milliwatt laser uh, on your bullfrog, it's not going to be visible to enemies. At this point, with the bullfrog, the only other two attachments we really need to consider here are the stock attachments. And usually the last three are the best. But after doing the testing on our Mac 10 video, the skeletal stock will give you the same spirit to fire time as the no stock will but the no stock doesn't hurt your, your hit fire accuracy as much and then the pkm stock will be the best in terms of firing movement speed so like i said the last three stocks are going to be up to personal preference the rear grips inside warzone for every single gun doesn't actually do anything they do tend to help a bit with vertical recoil or whatever, but it doesn't help as much as the attachments that do state they help with recoil. But at this point with the Bullfrog, there's actually two builds that I would highly recommend. So the first is my favourite, which is the hit fire build for the Bullfrog. So what I would use here is the GRU suppressor, and that's so you can get the bullet velocity and all that kind of stuff. The underbarrel, I would use the red cell foregrip, like I said. Ammunition, Stanag, 85 rounds definitely the best attachment there then i would go with the five milliwatt laser like i said i wouldn't use the ember sighting point just because of that light but if you do want to go for the overall best hit fire possible then you could definitely use the ember sighting point but i would choose the five milliwatt laser and then lastly i would choose a stock attachment and personally i would go for the sprint to fire time bonus and the least amount of con to hit fire with the no stock attachment you could also just not go for any stock here and kind of leave it at this and maybe choose a barrel attachment if you really wanted to this class setup right here in terms of a hit fire build for the bullfrog works super super good this works really well and like i said you can get some ads kills with this build as well because the gun is so accurate to begin with and you're not really using any attachments that are going to hurt the recoil you can still aim down sights and fry enemies super quick with that as well but in my opinion if you're looking for the best overall bullfrog class setup that you can kind of use at close and medium-ish range then for the stock you want to use the pkm stock this is going to give you the fastest shooting movement speed out of all the attachments 
then you want to remove the red cell foregrip, add the Spetsnaz grip, and then add the Task Force Barrel. And this way you're going to get the faster strafing speed, which is so important inside Warzone right now. Because guns like the MAC-10 and guns like the FFAR-1 have really fast strafing speeds, so you definitely need that with this SMG. So there we have two amazing class setups for the Bullfrog. In my opinion, the Hipfire build is the best. But like I said, if you're looking for the best overall build, the one that you see on screen just now is going to be a good option. But let me know what you think about the Bullfrog down in the comments below. And this has helped you make that purchase on that new weapon blueprint that you see in the store. On top of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel as we're trying to reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers. And it takes us a while to put together videos like this. Also, make sure you click that link in the description down below and follow us over on Twitch. We're trying to reach our goal of 100 followers over there as well. And thank you very much for watching.